Hi, I'm Lisa Nichols, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use column chromatography to purify a mixture. I have about 100 milligrams of acetyl ferrocene that's contaminated with some ferrocene. And I know that because I previously took a TLC of the mixture. So the TLC, it looks like this. Um, in this lane, I spotted ferrocene, and that's that yellow compound up here. The middle lane is a co-spot, and the other lane over here is the product mixture. So if you notice, I have a small amount of ferrocene that's left over. That's what I'm gonna be trying to get rid of. And this spot is what I care about. That's the acetyl ferrocene. So you wanna choose your solvent system so that the molecule that you care about, which in, in my case is the acetyl ferrocene, that it has an RF of about 0.3 and that it's quite separated from other, um, other contaminants. So I'm gonna use a three to one hexane to ethyl acetate mixture for my column. So there are lots of different kinds of columns. They can be different heights, different widths. You might have to put a piece of cotton in the bottom of the column. Um, the ones that I have actually have a glass frit, so we don't need to do that. Um, but whichever one you have, the first thing to do is to clamp your column to a ring stand and bring that to the fume hood. There are also several ways to pack a column. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the slurry method. To prepare for that, what I first do is add a wide mouthed funnel to the top of the column and then in the fume hood pour in my silica gel to whatever height is recommended. I'm going to go to five inches and the reason that we need to do this in the fume hood is that silica gel or alumina if you're using it they're very fine particles and it's actually a breathing hazard. So anytime you're working with the powder version of the silica gel make sure and do that in the fume hood. I'll next transfer that funnel to a large Erlenmeyer flask and pour out the silica. Then I'll make a slurry with the silica gel by adding some of the solvent that I plan to use on the column. Just pour some in, give it a swirl. You might even use a glass stirring rod to help stir the mixture, but add enough solvent so that it's a pourable mixture. If there isn't enough room to do the column in the fume hood, once you've made the slurry mixture, you can bring it to your bench top. What I would then do is put an Erlenmeyer flask underneath the column, have the stopcock open so that it can drain, and then through one of those wide mouthed funnels, then uh, pour the slurry mixture. So give it a swirl, give it a quick dump, and then follow it up with a small rinse of solvent to transfer more of it to the column. Okay, and then here's something important, is that after you've poured it on, you need to follow it up and rinse the sides immediately with solvent. Use a pipette and squirt the liquid down the sides. If you don't do this right away, that silica gel is going to dry on there and it won't come off easily. So do this right away after you've poured the slurry mixture onto the column. While you were doing the rinse and allowing the liquid to drain out, the column was settling and packing, but it's also important that you make sure that there aren't any air bubbles that are trapped inside of that solid column. So to get out the air bubbles, you wanna give, it a, give the column a, a jostle. Hit it with your hands a bit and make sure that those air bubbles get loosened up. What we next wanna do is protect the horizontal level of that, that column. So I'm gonna add some sand to the top and that's gonna give us a buffer for when we add other liquids that we won't be disturbing the top layer of that silica gel. So scoop in some sand, maybe half a centimeter or so, and after you scoop some in, use some solvent to rinse the sand down the sides and get it to the top of the column. I'm ready to add my sample to the column, but there's a lot of extra liquid at the top. So um, I can open up the stopcock and let it drip out, but it's sort of slow. And so you can push this along by using air pressure. So if you connect a, a hose connected to your air line to the top of the column, you can then push down the liquid and drain it to the top of the sand. You never want it to go into the white level of the column. Uh, never let it go below the sand layer, but push it down just to the sand. Then slowly release the air line and close the stopcock. I'm gonna collect fractions from the column, so I wanna prepare for that next. Um, fill a test tube rack up with some test tubes and then position that underneath the column and make sure there's space. You may need to raise the column up. 
but then put the test tube rack and move it uh, left to right and make sure that it's not going to bump the tip of the column at any point. I'm now going to prepare my sample and since I have some toxicity issues, now is probably a good time for me to wear my gloves. So if you have a liquid, you can pipette that directly onto the column. If you have a solid, the ideal thing is to use the same solvent that you're using for the column to dissolve it. Um, but mine, I actually have some solubility issues. So instead, I'm going to use a small amount of dichloromethane to dissolve my solid. Now I'm going to use a long stemmed pipette to add my sample to the column. If you ever notice that liquid drips uncontrollably from a pipette, you can withdraw and expunge it several times and that normally causes it to be more controlled. So I'm now carefully putting that pipette atop the column and I'm very delicately dripping in the sample. I know it's off screen right now, but I'm trying to get the pipette as low as possible, as close to the sand layer as I can, and I'm not dripping the liquid down the sides, but trying to drip it carefully, drop by drop, into the middle of the sand layer. I'm not squeezing on the pipette bulb and just shooting the li liquid in there. If I do, I would cause a divot in the, um, the column and that'll affect the separation. We use that sand layer to try to make sure that the horizontal level of the column stays um, intact. So after I've uh, added my sample, I notice that my, my vial still has quite a bit of residue in it, so I'm gonna do a rinse. So I add a small amount more of dichloromethane and then use pipette to add that rinse to the column as well. Next, I'm going to open up the stopcock and allow that liquid to drain a little bit. Um, I want to push the sample onto the column, like onto the white part now. So I'm going to let it drip down all on its own until it gets just past the sand layer and just to the very top of the white part. Next, I'll add some solvent to do a rinse and I'll be again really careful about how I add this to the column. I'm going to drip the liquid down the sides, rinse it down the sides, and then I'll again open up the stopcock and let that drain until the liquid just goes past the sand layer onto the column. I can do it a second time if I feel I need to and again let it drain till the liquid is right past the sand and to the top of the white part. So now I want to add extra solvent to the column. And when the solvent level is so low and it's real near the sand layer, you have to do this carefully. So you want to add solvent with the pipette and just um, rinse it around the sides. And then eventually, once your solvent level gets high enough, you would be able to pour it out of the flask. Um, and then at, at that point, you wouldn't be disrupting that, that column level. So you just want to fill up the column, um, even up into the bulb area. Um, fill that up with solvent so that you won't have to refill while you're running the column. After all that prep work, it's finally time to elute the column. So open up the stopcock and let the liquid drain out into a test tube. When the test tube fills, move it over and collect the liquid into a different test tube. So that's called collecting fractions. And the goal is to collect different compounds in different test tubes, thereby separating them. And now instead of just letting the liquid drain out at its own rate, I'm going to apply air pressure to the top of the column to push the liquid through the column faster. This speeds up the entire process, but it also makes for a better separation. And now I'm going to speed up the whole video and get through this a lot faster. I'm going to just keep collecting the fractions and moving the test tubes over to keep on filling one test tube after another. At this point, you can see that I've collected the yellow compound into the test tubes and I've separated it from the orange compound that's still on the column. If you do have something that's colored and you can see this kind of separation, when you're going in between the two, you might want to give the tip of the stopcock a rinse because sometimes there's splatter and so that would have had the yellow stuff um, on that, that uh, stopcock and we might want to rinse that off before the orange stuff comes through. And I'm going to just keep collecting fractions until my orange compound has also looted off the column. And do make sure while you're doing this to keep your eye up on the solvent level. You don't ever want the liquid level to travel lower than the sand level. You need that silica gel area to always be wet. Um, so if it is getting a little too, too low, um, do pause the process, close the stopcock, and refill the uh, solvent reservoir, and then continue with the column. 
After you've eluded the column, it's now time to combine the fractions that have the compound that you're interested in. So if you have a colorless compounds, you're gonna to have to use TLC to figure out which ones to combine. But if you had colored compounds, you probably could just do this by eye. So combine the ones that you're interested in, um, pour those into a round bottom flask. You can rinse the test tube with a bit of the solvent that you used for the column. And then eventually you can rotavap the solvent to get your compound back. To clean up, you want to use air pressure to drain the liquid from the used column and completely dry it out. And then once dry, you can pour the used silica into a waste jar.